Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Jared, and we are here for another fun lesson with Speak Now 2, Lesson 27. Can you do me a favor? Help! Asking people to do a favor is something that can sometimes be a little scary to do. But if you ask a right favor, eh, somebody will probably help you out. So asking somebody a favor is something that we have to be very careful when we do because we don't want to ask too much of someone, but it's always good if someone can help us out. So whenever you can help an, a friend out, don't be afraid to help someone out. A friend in need is definitely a friend indeed. So let's get started and have some fun. Here we go. So let's talk about things that you might need in your house or apartment. Now. We have places that we can go and buy new furniture, new things, pillows, mirrors, rugs, curtains, all those fun things that we can use for our apartment. Now, one of the things that I've lived in Korea for a long time now, one of the things I've noticed is that Korean people throw a lot of things out that are still in actually very good condition. Yes, there might be a tear or a rip here or there, but when you're a college student or a poor working person, before you get married and you start getting all these name brand or wonderful things, there's something called dumpster diving. Dumpster diving is where you go look around for what people throw out. Some people throw out their treasure and what's said is one person's garbage is another person's treasure. You may be surprised. You can get a lot of good things just by looking around. Sometimes you, know, you may have to do a little work on it. Maybe you have to repair something. But until you can afford to buy something better, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, one of my friends, as a matter of fact, got a very good TV that had been ready to be thrown out. He got a huge flat screen TV. And he, he saw it, looked good, looked in good condition. He took it over to the AS Center. He looked at it and said, oh, this, is, this little part's uh, broken. It cost you 50,000 won to fix it fixed it. He got a brand new big screen TV for 50,000 won. That all he had to do was go to the ticket of the store and get it fixed instead of paying for a new TV which probably would have cost him about $1,500. About uh, what would that be? About, about Beck Oshiban Wan. So it's good sometimes. Go look. There's no problem in taking it. See if you can get it fixed. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, eh, you return it where you found it. So this is where you can find lots of things to decorate your house. Look there first before you buy brand new. One of the problems with the 21st century is that we're living in what's called a disposable culture. Disposable culture means that people buy things new instead of trying to fix and repair things. This is partly because it's sometimes cheaper to buy something new, and that's the problem. For example, most people have very nice uh, new telephones. And after two years, it's almost cheaper to buy a brand new phone than to get an old phone repaired. This is something we need to work on going away from. When you buy something, buy quality. Something that you're going to use for a long time. Because if you're only going to use it for a short time, it's better to go dumpster diving. All right, we're going to listen to a conversation between Jake and Ben. Uh, they're ones out shopping, and they're asking, hey, can you go pick up these extra things? I forgot about this, or hey, do we need this? So let's take a listen. Hello? Hi, Jake. It's me, Ben. Are you still at the home decor store? Yeah, I just found the lamp we looked at online. It will look great in our new apartment. Oh, good. Listen, can you do me a favor? Sure. Would you get some pillows for the sofa? No problem. Do you want any particular color? How about green? Sure. Anything else? Would you mind picking up a mirror, too? Not at all. Do we need anything else? Actually, can you pick up some food? Our fridge is empty. Okay, so he's asking him to pick up many things. 
a lamp, a mirror, some pillows, and food. That's going to be a pretty big trip coming home carrying all that stuff. I hope he has a car and not traveling on the subway. But be careful when you ask, do you need anything else? Because some people will take advantage of your generosity and kindness. Other people won't. Some people are very good about it. It's like, oh, I just need one thing. If you don't really need it at that time, wait and go buy it yourself. Don't ask someone else to do the things that you should do. Now, if they're living together, they're sharing the, spend, the, the expenses, and Jake knows, hey, I'm going to pay Ben back whenever uh, he gets back. I'll pay him for the things that he's going to buy. That's okay. But if it's like, well, hey, you buy this. Hey, you buy this. Hey, you buy this. And I don't pay you back. Be very careful of the friends and what you buy for other people. So let's go ahead. We're going to listen to this conversation again. And there's a couple extra sentences that they put in. Let's listen to it and hear those extra sentences. Hello? Hi, Jake. It's me, Ben. Are you still at the home decor store? Yeah, I just found the lamp we looked at online. It will look great in our new apartment. And it's on sale. Oh, good. Listen, can you do me a favor? Sure. What do you need? Would you get some pillows for the sofa? No problem. Do you want any particular color? How about green? Sure. Anything else? Would you mind picking up a mirror, too? Not at all. Do we need anything else? Actually, can you pick up some food? Our fridge is empty. All right, so the fridge is empty. Now, one of the things that they saw is that they had shopped for the lamp online. They knew how much they could buy the lamp online. Now, some places you can buy things online cheaper than you can in person. And again, if you look around, you might be able to find what you're looking for cheaper someplace else. So don't jump at the first price that you see. If it's something you really want, shop around a little bit. Spend a little time to find the thing that you want. And go see if you can find it on sale. Finding it on sale is a bonus. Save yourself some money. Okay. Now, making requests. A request is something that you should always feel uh, willing to turn down. Sorry, I can't do that right now. Um, with uh, Ben at the store, can you pick up some pillows? Oh, man, sorry, I don't have any extra money for this. Oh, okay, that's okay, I'll buy it later. Make sure not to overuse a request. Requests are not an order. They're not required. Would you or could you do something for me? It's asking politely, would you mind doing this or could you do this for me? Hey, you're going out. Could you get this for me? It's good if somebody's already going to where you're, where you're going to go shopping or pick something up. Make a request. All they can do is say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. But if they're not going to the place that you're uh, particularly looking for something, don't ask people to go someplace that they're not already going. Hey, would you mind going to the store that's right next door to where you are? Some people will be okay. Sure, no problem. I'm here. I'll go, I'll go ahead and get something for you. If it's something small, maybe you could ask them. But don't send people to do your errands. Get up, go do your things, and if they volunteer to help you, great. Don't impose yourself on them. And when you accept, of course, sure, no problem. I don't mind. You can accept it gracefully. But if you can't do their request, be sure to tell them, sorry, I can't do that right now. Oh, we need pillows and a mirror? Okay, I don't have enough money for pillows and a mirror. Which one do you want more? Go with that so that later on, that favor will come back to you. And then when Ben calls his roommate and says, hey, can you pick this up? Don't be somebody, 
well, no, I can't. You do all the favors. I don't do any favors. If you ask people to do favors, they should be doing favors back for you. That's polite. That's kind. That's where you have a good relationship. If you find people who are doing, asking you to do favors, and they never do a favor for you, it's time to stop doing favors for them. Now, we're going to listen to this, and we're going to listen to the shortening of would you and could you into would you and could you. So take a listen, and let, we'll talk on the other side. Page 67. Pronunciation. A. Listen and practice. Notice how would you and could you are reduced. 1. Would you get some pillows? 2. Could you please pick up some plants? All right. Now, this has got the... Uh, the wrong IPA here. The J is not the sound that you hear here, um, but it is what it would sound like if it was in English, using English letters. Would you, could you, would you, could you. Now, this is where don't try making your, your words shortened. It will either happen naturally or not, and it does not have to happen. It's very good to have very clear, precise pronunciation. Would you help me, please? Could you help me? That's very good and natural. If you say it, that becomes your style, great. But if you hear people using would you, could you, and you start imitating them, as long as you stick with that style, you're going to be just fine. It's up to you to decide what kind of um, accent that you're going to have. All up to you how you want to sound. If you want to sound like you're from Ireland and you feel like having a little bit of an Irish accent, then that's all fine and great. And it's wonderful if you want to do that. Or if you want to go down under and you want to make yourself sound like you're an Aussie or Kiwi, that's also great. It's all what you want to sound like. Your accent, your style, your choice. Now, we have one more section here. Look at this picture. Now, this picture, oh, this house needs some help. Um, not only do the pictures need to be straightened, but nothing really matches. And for growing up as a co poor college student, this looked a lot like several of the houses and rooms that I lived in where nothing matched. And that was part of the style. But you can do things to make things better here. For example, you could put a sheet or set of sheets over these couches to make them all the same color. You could use a rug that matches things here. Put some plants on the table. What would you do? What could you do to make this room better? How would you make this room yours? Please don't just say water the plant. I know the plant needs watering. The cat needs food. Meow, meow. But what could you do to make this room better? And today, for this room, you can have these wonderful pictures that we're going to put up on the walls. And also, along with that, we are going to sell you not one, not two, but three covers for your furniture. Seriously, what would you do to make this important and a nice place for you to live? All right, everybody. It's time for everybody's favorite part of the lesson. That's right. It comes to workbook time. All right. So we're looking at what the, are these things and where do we usually use them? Now, some of these things we can use in multiple rooms, clocks, curtains, Candles can be used in multiple places, but some items work better in one place or another. For example, a pillow. We might use a pillow in the living room. We could also use a pillow in the bedroom. A pillow in the bathroom. 
unless you're somebody like me who uh, all of a sudden falls asleep in the bathtub, a pillow probably wouldn't help you. But that's okay. Where would you use these different items? And there is no right or wrong answer. Some people put the mirrors in the living room. Some put them in the bathroom. It's all up to you. It's your house, remember? Now, write a sentence to agree with the request. Can you do me a favor? Sure. What can I do for you? No problem. What can I do? Write a good response to what the person is requesting. All right. Now, we're going to read this email and then answer the uh, objects that are going to be bringing to you. So this is an email from Susanna Moore, subject moving in, date January 15th, 2013, to Doris Johnson. Doris Johnson is the one who's receiving this. Susanna is the one who's sending this. Hi, Doris. I'm so excited. I can't wait to share an apartment with you. I know we will be great roommates. I wanted to tell you about my furniture and other things. I have a pink sofa and purple rug. I also have some orange curtains. I like bright colors. I also have a lion clock and two elephant lamps. Can you tell I like animals? Would you please get some pillows? They go with the colors and the general design of the room. Can you also get a mirror? Uh, or maybe two really big ones. We also need some chairs and maybe some pictures for the wall. Oh, and can you do me a favor? I'm really busy on Saturday. Do you think you could come by and pick up my stuff and move into an apartment for me? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. See you soon, Susanna. Okay, I'm going to come to your apartment. I'm going to come by your place, pick up your stuff, and move in for you? I don't think so. This is where somebody has gone beyond the limits. This is where, when we talk about weddings and stuff like this, you might hear the term bridezilla. This is where somebody goes beyond what would be normal to the point of being demanding of something really, really strange. Asking somebody to move your stuff in, that's very rude, unless you really know that person well. And if you've done the same thing for them in the past, it's perfectly fine to ask them to return the favor. But, here's the big but caveat, I wouldn't do it. Don't, not because I don't mind moving people's things, not because I uh, wouldn't take care of it, but, as I said, here's the but, once you take control of that item or that uh, thing, it's your responsibility. If something Thing happens to it, you are responsible for it. I know this firsthand. I took I took uh, my sister-in-law's uh, desk one year. I was watching it and said I would take it and put it in my storage facility. And as I was moving it, her desk literally fell apart. It broke into pieces, and I was being very careful with it. But as I was moving it, I picked it up and the joints, everything fell apart. I ended up having to replace the desk and I had to spend 200,000 won that I didn't have to replace it. Actually, I told my mother about this. She gave me the $200 to replace it, but it was very, very difficult. When I tried to explain what happened, my brother and my sister-in-law didn't believe me and I didn't have a video camera at that time. I didn't show what had happened, but it literally just disintegrated. It was made out of that pressed wood. Uh, as I mentioned before, dumpster diving is good, but getting things made out of pressed wood, if you're very careful with it, it's very cheap, works great for a short time, but it doesn't last forever. Not good quality. So be careful when you accept somebody else's belongings and take responsibility for it because if something goes wrong, you're responsible for it. So be careful. All right, the last one. Pretend that you're going to move in with a roommate in a new one-room apartment, studio apartment, or even uh, a two-bedroom or whatever kind of apartment you want to move into. How would you 
describe your style. What would you take? Look around your own apartment, your own house. What items would you take to your apartment? What items would you put into your new place? Share your ideas, see what the other people would say. And find somebody to talk to about it. Talk to your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, somebody about your ideas and what your ideas would look like in, in another apartment. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is two down. We got one more video this week to go, and I know that you're gonna enjoy this last video even more. So until that time, have a great and great and wonderful day, and I will see you again in class very soon. Take care.